written for Jupiter Dasha, the great benefic. This is a good Dasha most of the time because Jupiter is a benefic. But as we know from the very first video in this series, so the very beginning when we talk about the results of the Mahadasha by itself, general ways to assess the Mahadasha, that we cannot simply say you're in a Jupiter cycle, therefore everything's going to work out. Why? Because maybe Jupiter is not in good dignity. Maybe Jupiter is in a difficult house. Maybe the planets in relationship to Jupiter are hurting Jupiter. Maybe Jupiter does not have positive Lajitadi Vasha of his friends. Maybe Jupiter is exalted in the birth chart, but maybe in all the other Vargas and say, I don't know, 10 of the 16 Vargas, um, Jupiter is in an enemy sign or in a difficult house within the Vargas. So all these things have to be weighed to understand the full impact of any planet, which is why sometimes malefic planets can give wonderful things in their dasha, even though they're going to make you work hard for it. And sometimes benefic dasha, such as Venus or Mercury or Jupiter, don't necessarily give the best because of their placement and the relationship of other planets to the planet in question, such as Jupiter here, and also the placements within the Vargas. So to understand the dashas, we need to have a full grasp of many other foundational astrological techniques. Again, review this channel, uh, youtube.com slash Ryan's Vedic Astrology, and I think you'll find some helpful videos to get you started in that direction. But the point of this particular series is to help us see what Parashara says about the dashas, and to give us some insights about how to understand and figure out, well, when is it going to work well, and when is it going to work poorly? And all that's going to be related to the dasha itself, the mahadasha itself, the sub-cycles of the dashas, as well as the transits that occur as the dasha is happening. All this we've discussed in previous videos. But for the effects of Jupiter according to Parashara, now I'm going to describe the effects of the dasha of Jupiter, the great benefic and preceptor of the gods. If Jupiter be in his sign of exaltation, in his own sign, in his mula tricona, in the tenth, the fifth, or the ninth, in his own or exalted navamsha, there will be during his dasha acquisition of a kingdom, or, as this typically translates, attainment of high political positions within your work or within politics, administrative position, could be in government or corporations, great felicity, recognition by the government or authorities, acquisition of conveyances and clothes, devotion to deities and Brahmins, happiness and respect of his wife and children, and success and performance of religious sacrifices. Oftentimes when people go into a Jupiter dasha, they do become a little more religiously minded or charitable because this is the nature of Jupiter. So as we can see, this is all following a theme. Jupiter in trines. Um, Jupiter exalted in the Vamsha. Uh, Jupiter in his own sign, in Mula Tricona. All these help the planet, the Dasha Lord, to work well. And this is going to be mostly true for all planets. So as we go through these, this series and these videos, pay attention to the repetition, because that will help get in your mind the principles so that you can properly look at a dasha and understand a dasha. Parashar goes on to say, should Jupiter be in a sign of debilitation, combust, in association with malefics or in the sixth or eighth house, there will be during his dasha loss of residential premises, anxiety, distressed children, loss of cattle and pilgrimages. The dasha will give some unfavorable effects at its commencement only, during the later part of the dasha, there will be good effects like gain of wealth, awards from and recognition by government and authorities. And again, this will be particularly true and accurate if transits occur that support these things and they are already in your chart. I'm going to have to make a separate video on this point. Um, again, something we covered in detail in the Astrological Principle series, the MP3 downloads uh, at AshevilleVedicAstrology.com. For those of you who are just trying to gain general knowledge, you need to be aware that these listings of what the dashas mean, they're giving you an idea, but you have to be able to confirm it within the person's birth chart. Meaning if in the person's birth chart 
there is an indication for political success. Maybe um, Sun and Venus are doing very well in the 11th house, and maybe the Sun is the person's Atmakarika. Well, that can give an indication for political success and popularity. So you know that that's there, and then when you go and you see that they're running the Jupiter Dasha, and you see that's a potential within the Jupiter Dasha, then you're more likely to make that prediction, especially if a transit is occurring at the same time to make it happen. So again, we see that there are multiple levels to this kind of prediction. It's not as simple as a lot of people make it out to believe, and I don't think it should be. You know, again, uh, when someone becomes a doctor, how many years do they spend studying medicine? Does it make sense that to be an astrologer, we should read two or three books, and then all of a sudden, we know how to do these things, you know, make these kinds of predictions? No, it takes years of study and application, and we have to know how to read the birth chart first. So as you're considering uh, the Dasha of Jupiter, realize that there can be good things given, as Jupiter is a benefic planet, but it will really require that certain variables be fulfilled within the birth chart itself along with transits. And we also need to remember that the, one of the problems with doshas of benefic planets, gentle planets such as Jupiter and Venus, where we expect things to come easier, when those planets are strong they will come easier. But if those planets are not strong, we'll, we'll have a tendency to be lazy about it. We'll think that we're supposed to get good things to occur, but they never do because we, we don't have the grit or the uh, tenacity that, say, a malefic planet might give to light a fire under us to make it happen. So if something really good is going to happen with a benefic planet, that good thing has to be well supported within the chart. Otherwise, the potential can still be there. But for you, rather than waiting around for it to happen, you can see the potential is there, but it's weak. So you can act to, take, um, to make choices to encourage it. So always remember with these kinds of dashes, don't just sit around, see if there's a potential positive thing, and then work towards it. You'll have greater success in that regard. So I don't like to encourage people to be fatalistic about this. I like to encourage you to engage your um, experiences in life and to realize the birth chart is a reflection of your karma up until the moment you were born. But after that, your choices help to shape how you use that particular chart. Someone recently wrote to me and they were having a very difficult time and they wanted to know when their remedies were going to work. Well, remedies, in a sense, are outside of the birth chart, meaning that if they weren't doing anything, we, would, we could then look at the chart and see when will you get better or when will you not get better. But when it comes to remedies, the chart is static. When I look at a, a chart, it's not going to change. My computer is not going to change things just because you've done a remedy, because it's already there. It's locked in from your birth. So that's why oftentimes the more work you do on yourself, the less defined you are by your chart, because you're, you've worked with the foundation of your chart, but then you started living more consciously, making better choices. So this will be applicable to any particular dasha. Um, but specifically in benefic dashes, you want to remember this, that working hard will make the good things that are possible better, and if your benefic planet, such as Jupiter, is not well-placed, it can help to strengthen and support um, those karmas versus letting you be on autopilot and wait around for something good to happen, and it doesn't in a benefic dasha. Then you get let down. So engage your chart, engage your karma, become more aware, become more conscious, Use that as a foundation, as a springboard, but don't let it define you. Okay, next. We will be looking at the Dasha of Saturn.